District of Disabilities. Good evening, everybody. Welcome to the regular meeting of the Water District Board of Directors this lovely Wednesday evening, March 20th. First day of spring. Oh, that's right. Yay! Who would like to leave the flag tonight? <laughs> Steve, would you leave us in the flag smooth this evening? Sure. Thank you. To the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible. Liberty and justice for all. Can you hear me now? Are you good, Bob? Determination of a quorum. Do a roll call. Director Reynolds. Here. Director Luckman. Here. Director Unger. Here. Director Hund. Here. You have a quorum. Uh, President Johnson is still on the DL, so I will be leading the meeting tonight. Do I have an approval of the agenda? I move the agenda. I have a, a question. Um, is there, a, I didn't see minutes on this agenda from last meeting. Uh, Madam, they, Madam Vice President, I can respond to that. The workload for my executive assistant was quite severe, and I directed her to prepare the minutes for the next board meeting. Thank you. Uh, with that, I'll second that motion then. And I would, I would like to propose a change, if you guys feel. Um, last week at the final meeting, uh, and I had up to spend an hour on item 11, and it was on the uh, miscellaneous fee increases. Yeah. And if you've all had a chance to go over that and, and feel you want to tackle that this evening, uh, otherwise we can put it on next week's agenda, or not next week's agenda, which would be April 3rd. I guess, I guess to me it depends on how detailed the staff report is. I just want to make sure the public has adequate time to um, from us and the staff to, to hear it. Pretty detailed. <laughs> Have you had a chance to? Yeah, I think that might go along. Um, I, I think uh, postponing it might not be a bad idea. But uh, on that same subject, um, um, I'm, I've noticed that there's no minutes for the uh, special committee meetings. Um, and, and I would like to request that those be included in on the agenda as well, especially where a committee makes a, a recommendation. I would like to see that in the minutes as well. If, would that be an um, appropriate request? What is the request for? The request is um, um, committee meeting minutes. Um, I don't see them on the agendas, the regular board meeting, meeting agendas. And my... Um, question is, is if we're making um, a, a decision, a vote, and uh, it's encouraged and based on a recommendation from that committee, I would uh, request that we see those minutes on the uh, agenda. You know, they're usually not very uh, involved. One, one yeah, page. they kind of say yeah. uh, they got a presentation, they got a presentation, they moved to, uh, uh, to move it along. Uh, there's really very little detail in those minutes. And so the recommendation would just be a hearsay recommendation then? Well, it, the, actually the, the uh, agenda is very detailed. So yeah, the, if you want to know, read, look at the agenda. The minutes, uh, the minutes are made public because they're on, they're on the, um, the back of the agenda of each meeting and mm -hmm. they're posted on the website. So. But those committee meetings, I know what you mean, the standing committee meetings. All right. They're pretty brief. They're really summary. Not not as involved as, like, say, the minutes of the board meeting right. would be. Those are those usually go into a Because we have more. Bev here to do that, and Bev doesn't come to the committee right, meetings. Right, right, yeah, yeah. But if you'd like to go up, we can we can leave this on the agenda tonight, or or you. Oh, I'm completely happy with, um, with your proposal to, to postpone it. Yeah, I don't mind one bit. 
Uh, Director Lincoln, how do you feel about that? I'm ready to vote, but I was at the meeting. Yeah, same here. Mm -hmm. Well, I've, I've had a briefing on it. It's just a matter of whether or not, given that we have a fairly long agenda, if we'll have enough time. But I'm, I'm ready to vote as well, if that's the pleasure of the, the board. Uh, and, and time is what I was looking at as well. And uh, someone, I guess I can't make the motion to move this to next meeting. Someone else has to make the motion. I would make that motion. Do I hear a second? To Cons uh, to consider miscellaneous fee increase resolution for the April 3rd meeting. I have a question for staff before I consider a second. Um, how are things stacking up with the upcoming meetings? Is this going to create an undue um, hardship or problem with, with moving things through the board? If we delay the silo. Well, we'll bring what we're what we're ready to bring, and many of them have to go through the finance and water ops committees anyway. Yeah. Um, so we're ready, but we can also be ready April third. Yeah. Whatever the next board meeting is, I think it's April third. Either way, there's no urgency per se, and we've got a public hearing on every meeting from <laughs> now for a while. So. Well, Do I hear a second? If not, the motion dies. Um, I think I'm going to let it let it stand on the agenda for my part. Okay. Me uh, too. Okay. Motion to uh, move that to April 3rd uh, doesn't pass, so we will have it on tonight's <coughs> agenda. With that, do I hear an approval of the agenda? So moved. Move. Um, I second it. All in favor? Aye. 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 Public comment. Members of the public may address the board at this time with regard to matters within the board's jurisdiction that are not listed on the agenda. State law prohibits the board of directors from discussing or taking action on items not included on the agenda. Members of the public will have the opportunity for public comment on any item listed on the agenda when it is addressed on the agenda. Please limit comments to three minutes or less. Do I have any public comment? How about that consent calendar and those check registers? <laughs> Do I have a motion to approve the consent calendar, which is the check register uh, for January 2019, which had gone through the Finance Committee on March 13th? I'll make that motion. Second. Any comment? Any public comment? Uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 Okie dokie. At this time, the board will conduct a public hearing to receive and discuss public input and comment regarding the potential transition from an at-large election district system to a district-based election system pursuant to Elections Code Section 10010, parentheses A, parentheses 1. So the public hearing is now open, and we will now hear staff and consult the presentation. Good evening. I'm going to, hopefully this is working. Um, Jennifer Fail from Rutan and Tucker. Um, I know you guys have a pretty long agenda and we've had a couple meetings on this now, so I'm going to try to keep my presentation uh, pretty short and sweet. Um, at our last meeting on this issue, so that was last Wednesday, um, the board had asked for a more detailed map um, that uh, listed not only where the directors currently live, but also where um, streets are located and approximate neighborhoods within the district and population size. So you have an enlarged map before you tonight, as well as you can see there's several maps located um, around the room. Um, I want to be very clear that this is not a district map. Um, this is just a map with some additional information to facilitate our discussion for what district maps could look like um, at the next meeting. And our, as a reminder, our next meeting, um, April 3rd, is when we will be discussing actual district maps. Those district maps will also be placed on uh, the board's website seven days prior to April 3rd. So I don't have the date off the top of my head, but seven days before, if anybody, any member of the public would like to take a look at them or um, the directors themselves, um, you'll be able to find them on the website. Um, 
Uh, we also have a representative from NDC, Jeff, in the audience tonight. If you uh, have any specific questions for him, I'm sure he'll be happy to answer them. Um, if not, we're really looking to continue our discussion from last Wednesday um, about what your communities of interest are. Um, if you had to split this area into five, what would make most sense for the community? We're interested, obviously, in the director's comments as well as any members of the public. Um, with that, Jeff and I will pretty much be taking notes to um, take back so we can draw some maps for you and bring them forward April 3rd. Are there any questions from the board about these presentations? Dr. Reynolds? No. no. Okay. Uh, public comments. Hello, Gail Austin, Joshua Free resident. Um, at the last meeting, uh, Director Unger had requested a, looking at a map with just like five lines, and I thought that we were going to be able to see that. I didn't realize it was just going to be a pre... Um, so today we don't see anything with any kind of population. This is just population right now. That's correct. So um, we have noted that you've requested that map and that we discussed that map, and we're, we're allowed to bring forward district maps. That will be one of them. Um, just by statute, we're not allowed to do that yet. All right, thank you. Anyone else? And there is a, a, a schedule that we have. And this is everyone has to follow this same kind of schedule. We've had our first we had our first public meeting, which is on the February the sixth, where we adopted a resolution to convert to the district voting. Uh, on the thirteenth, we had our first public hearing, and those were the first of two before the maps are drawn. So tonight is public hearing two, the second of, of public hearings before the maps are drawn. And hopefully tonight what we'd like to do is get any more input uh, from the public, uh, how they might see it, the districts divided up into five, um, how they feel about it. Um, and uh, sure, no more public comment? <laughs> okay. No, I'll say, I'll speak. Okay, thank you, Steve. <laughs> Someone, please. Thank you. Be careful what you say. That's what we're here for. Stephen Whitman, Joshua Tree resident. I think this is the dumbest thing I've ever seen come through this room. Uh, we have five directors. In the past, we've had one or two that were problematic, uh, one nearly violent, and yet under this program, I can't vote for a damn thing about that problem. It's just I get to vote for Luckman, and that vote is going to be yes for as long as she's alive. Uh, Thank you, Steve. There are big areas of population. <laughs> there are big areas of our territory where no one's represented. Does that mean there's no one there that cares about this water district? I don't know, but I don't think it's a healthy situation. I think this is a lawyer-generated fraud, and it's out there to see who the hell they can victimize with the law. And I don't think we have enough money to oppose that, but I sure as hell don't like it. Thank you. Thank you. Tom. Tom Flo and Joshua Tree North. It, it seems like this is, we're doing this, well, the cart's before the horse somehow, but <clears throat> I'll proceed anyway. Uh, we, we have, uh, and I clar clarified, this is Jeff over here, Jeff? Yes, Jeff. Jeff. With Jeff over here last time, that there's a, um, at least a 10% wigwag in the uh, 1,908 uh, people that can populate a given district on, on the map. And if that's the case, then if there is con considerations for uh, protected, um, I forgot the term, protected Class. people or protected groups, um, or for community um, uh, a community-centered district, 
that 10% allows these boundaries to, to move a little bit um, uh, in order to accommodate those kinds of things. So I just thought we should, uh, uh, we should keep that in mind. Thank you. Karen? Karen Tracy, ratepayer. I also represent your Citizens Advisory uh, Committee. Uh, and I queried the other six members and I tried to query them and only one of them got back to me. So this does not rise to a very high occasion on um, your member. And I lean in the direction of Stephen Whitman's comments. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, we, we tried to get people to this meeting to tell them how important it is. Um, there, a, a benefit to by district elections would be for people who, you know, like Steve said, have they not thought about being on the water district? Has it not? Do they don't care about it? A lot of people don't want to run for office. They don't. They think it's politics, and they don't want to go through a election cycle and, and campaign and raise money and put up signs. Uh, they might be happy to be on the board or be good board members. And um, so it's not that that people I think are are an interest. They don't think that they have an aptitude for it or be good at it or just don't want to do the process. Um, but we really tried hard to get more people in here tonight. And thank you guys for coming. <laughs> so uh, it's it's important. It's a, uh, People could actually, you know, run uh, uh, in, a, in a district that's smaller instead of, you know, at large. Uh, in a small community that they directly <coughs> represent. I mean, this is a benefit, um, that they know the people, they know uh, what the community needs, what its issues are. Um, you know, 96 square miles and 5,000 connections mm -hmm. soaking wet. So, well, if there's no more public comments, I will close public comment. Any more questions and comments from anyone? I have one comment. I just can't help myself. I, I do math and I look at these things and do the math. And it's interestingly enough, if you took um, the Joshua Highlands, Friendly Hills, other and downtown, that's approximately three districts with the people. And then that, that would leave um, the uh, purple other area, Sunfair, Copper Mountain Mesa, and Panorama Heights would make two more districts. So oh, wow. just an interesting, pretty easy way to yeah. divide it up. Mm -hmm. And I think it's also, um, you know, and I live in Monument Manor, so I know I have neighbors that would disagree with me, but because we're pretty rural, but it's, it's interesting that that would put your more densely populated areas generally mm -hmm. together and your more rural areas together, with the exception of the Highlands and, and Monument Manor. Could you give me those districts again? How you saw that? You saw well, if you look, if you look, Highlands, yeah, Monument if you Manor, look at, Friendly Hills. Yeah, if you look at the numbers, um, the other starting at the south end of the map, mm -hmm. and then Monument Manor, Joshua Highlands, Friendly Hills, and downtown, that equals almost exactly three districts. A little bit change, and then, um, and then the other Sunfair, Copper Mountain Mesa, and Panorama Heights adds up to just about exactly two districts. So that would be putting um, the purple other, mm -hmm. Sunfair. Copper Mountain Copper Mason, Mountain Panorama, Panorama Heights. You'd have to probably divide Sunfair That's in, a, yeah. in, in order to um, achieve that. And I realize people have neighborhood identity and I appreciate that, but that's, you know, to, to make it work in the the southerly area, you'd have to link together several neighborhoods mm -hmm. as well. Yeah. So. It just it could be a, a relatively elo eloquent solution to the to the problem. I'll, I'll take that back and we'll see what it, what it looks like as far as the, the numbers come out. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Any, any other comments the board might have on this? Well, <coughs> then I will close the public hearing. <coughs> so, uh, Jeff, do you think we have enough to come back with a map, two maps, maybe? Well, probably, uh, we'll take the uh, suggestion. I'm thinking 
three to four. Right? I don't know if you can reach it. But I think the key here also, and, uh, in light of the public input, public can start now. You know, they could they could come up with suggestions too. And, uh, I have to. We're going to have a, a link on on the website where they can submit. No, we don't, we don't have that information yet. Generally, we have a, a an email address uh, where they could submit their own uh, drafted maps, or we're even taking photographs. If they draw a map okay. on their phone and they email that phone to us, we'll try to represent uh, and capture what they what they uh, are, are looking at. So, what email address would that be? I have to get it to you to, uh, tomorrow morning. Yeah, there's a there's a standard which probably. Joshua Basin at ndcresearch.com. It's it's going to be suspect suspect <laughs> specific to to Joshua Basin. Okay. okay. Yeah. One, so you can have one map. <coughs> you think you can have two maps with five districts? We'll probably we typically will go with at least three okay. just from our organization to you to look at as a starting point, as a discussion point. Mm -hmm. And then, and I'll, I'll mention your suggestion as well. That might be one of the suggestions of the three. He likes to give you a variety of maps to look at, and um, based on the input that we received the last two public hearings, um, and, and any other input that that comes, like I said, from the public, we submit their maps, and that's going to give you an opportunity for discussion at the next couple of public hearings. So it'll refine itself over the next public hearing, and I, I understand the frustration is we can't draw yet. Well, now we can after tonight. So we have to go through this process. And I guess my, my north-south strips was kind of a joke, but is that a viable map? You know, it, without me looking at the data, I can say <laughs> on the surface, 30,000 feet, yes, because others have done it. If you look at the PowerPoint, I can't remember, I think it's South Pasadena, uh, did something very similar yeah, to that. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Well, well, go ahead. Oh, I just wanted to add that um, providing this was very <coughs> helpful. So thank you for you know, responding to us and doing that. And, and I very much support the idea of having several different things to look at and consider. Yeah. Um, and my apologies from last week is that what I assumed were the, the director's residences was actually a GIS uh, symbol for mountain peaks. <laughs> well, I learned something. Well, 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 we're all Buddhists and we. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, based on that, but, uh, anyway. oh, well, thank you very much. Very nice. <coughs> we'll see you in a couple of weeks. Okay. Map lesson. Thank you, Dr. Moore. Thank you, Jennifer. Bye -bye. Thank you, Jennifer. <coughs> Thank you, Jennifer. Thanks, Thank you, Jeff. 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 Thank General Manager Employment Agreement. The board will consider approving Amendment 3 to the Employment Agreement with District General Manager. Uh, Madam Chairman, would you like me to take a little bit of a lead on this? Go ahead, please. Okay. Uh, this is item 9 of tonight's agenda. And last board meeting, which was the 13th, in closed session, the board conducted its annual performance evaluation of, the, of your general manager. Uh, and um, there was a uh, threshold decision made after that evaluation that a merit raise was in order and the, the, the draft of his employment agreement, which incidentally terminates March 31, we're on a short time leash here, uh, is in need of updating and extend, extending. Let's all turn to page 43 of tonight's agenda packet material. And I didn't know I was going to talk on this, but I'm, I'm, I'm happy to do so. If you look at the recital, well, let's just start at the top. This will give you, a, this is just good to follow, I think. It's a good roadmap for tonight's deliberations. Uh, this agreement we're looking at that's up for approval tonight is, uh, is, is an amendment to the existing employment agreement with Mr. Sauer. Because like I just mentioned, the agreement he's, work, he's now uh, working under is, terminates March 31st. So there is a certain amount of urgency. Uh, 
And the reason this is coming up now is because this evaluation that occurred on March 13th was long overdue. It just was. It should have, probably should have taken place in February or March. Uh, but anyway, that's the sense of urgency now because it's not scheduled to expire in, in, in a week or so. But um, there's only two items that are scheduled for action in this amendment. One of them is let's extend the employment agreement if it should be the board's desire. And number two is a, what if there is a merit raise in order and what should that amount be? <coughs> this draft suggests a 5% merit raise effective April 1 through the proposed extension date of September 30th. That's up for deliberations. No action was taken this in closed session. The law does not permit that. So this, after deliberations tonight, this 5% could become 10%. It could be 7%. It could become 2%. Or it could be nothing. That is up for the board's deliberations. Um, and that's really it. Two actions. Do, does the board desire to extend the March 31st employment agreement to September 30th. Why September 30th? Because that's what Mr. Sauer contemplates his retirement date would be. Somewhere near about that time frame. Could come earlier. There's a 30 day termination notice in this agreement, in the, in the body of the original agreement. Uh, but it could, it, it could go to September 30th, or you'd, maybe, maybe another amendment's going to be in order. He doesn't want to go till Christmas time or Thanksgiving. Who knows? <laughs> but anyway, to get no. you back focused on what the job is tonight. <laughs> You've got to decide whether you're going to extend the employment agreement. And if so, what are you going to extend it to? And you're going to say, during that, that extension period, is he going to get a merit raise? And what's that percentage going to be? Percentage going to be. It's open for deliberation. And that's, uh, that's exactly where we are, Gil. Thank you very much. And so uh, we have to, I guess, look at this in, in those two parts. Okay. So the first part is looking at the extension of uh, Kurt's uh, employment agreement as general manager. And we uh, decided to, to see if we could extend it beyond that just to make sure that everything that's been put in motion to be completed is completed, that there's a chain of succession, and yes, that if everything is done, then Kurt can, with a 30-day notice. Yeah. That date was suggested by Mr. Sauer. And he explained that, that he needs some time to have an orderly and seamless transition of responsibilities to whoever his successor might be. And that, it was, that, was came from, that suggestion came from Mr. Sauer. And the board is, is, is contemplating that. The board want to comment or you want public comment first? I'd like to hear public comment first. Okay, public comment, please. No comment. <laughs> I think this guy is my bodyguard. <laughs> Watch your back. Uh, <laughs> Stephen Whitman, Joshua Tree. Uh, it seems to me we're looking at two different things here. One, I think Kurt's a great general manager. And extending his employment, I think, would be admirable. Uh, two, I ask the question, when the federal government gives me a 1% raise in Social Security, why are we looking at 2, 5, or 10 percent here? Is there some hidden source of wealth that I don't see in my community? Uh, I think things are just a little out of balance, and I hope the board takes this into consideration. Thank you. Tom? Tom Flowen, Joshua Tree North. <laughs> Uh, I've been uh, watching Kurt very closely for a long time. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, I was a director, and uh, we try to read each other's minds. <laughs> and uh, he complimented me one time by saying that uh, we think a lot alike. Uh, when we did the um, strategic planning thing over here at uh, that hospital building, um, I was impressed that he was fully engaged in that. He was monitoring everything in minute detail. He was nudging Mary Orton, who was highly competent. You remember that, Gail? 
and uh, it, he was, uh, it was just very impressive. And I had some concerns uh, just recently. We had uh, someone here that uh, was complaining about a large water bill uh, that uh, extended over a couple of months and how that might be taken care of. And uh, <clears throat> he reported on that, uh, I believe, finance meeting, some such thing, last week. And I thought that was handled very fairly and reasonably, uh, uh, both for uh, David and um, also for the ratepayers, in that there was no burden placed on everybody else because of an individual's situation. Um, so um, I also think that he's, that's you, are very committed to the staff here. He's very proud of his staff. It's a visceral thing. Um, he will defend fairly everybody uh, on his staff. And uh, uh, so I, I would strongly recommend that we keep him around. And uh, I get my allowance from Los Angeles County, and they just sent me a notice that uh, I was going to get 3% cost of living allowance. And uh, so that we're talking, you know, within a couple of points of that for an exceptional person. Thank you. Gail. Gail Austin, Joshua Tree resident. Um, I've also watched the the water district since Kurt has been here, and um, the changes that have happened have all been so positive. Um, you can't even pay for that with money. Um, you can't buy a person like this, um, and that's the person that you need to reward the most with money because money is what we use as tokens of value. Um, you know, if, if there was another way, then we should do the other way. But um, someone that, that goes above and beyond, above and beyond, above and beyond, that is who should get a percentage. Now, as far as our cost of living, you know, my husband's a uh, retired Marine. Yeah, we get a cost of living raise, and he doesn't do a goddamn thing. But he did. <laughs> he did, but he does it now. And so cost of living is completely different from excellent, outstanding work. And I think that if his, his employees can get a 2% or 5% raise, depending on their uh, performance, I think that he should get a 5% raise. Thank you. Thank you. Your husband still loves you. <laughs> He's a good man. Any other public comment? I'll bring it back to the board. Who would like to start? Well, I absolutely support what the Finance Committee looked at. Was it Finance or was it The Ad Hoc. The Ad Hoc Committee looked at. I think that keeping current as long as possible is a, is a very valuable thing for the district. And I think that if uh, he certainly deserves the raise, and if he wants 5%, I think that given the amount of money that is for the few months, I support that absolutely. I, there's no reason I would ever say no. Uh, I would just like to add that um, uh, General Manager Sauer came in here from the federal government that pays decent wages, but not great wages compared to much of the private industry being uh, a federal employee myself, although I'm transitioning to a new job right now. And uh, um, he, he took a salary not too much different from his uh, highest uh, pay as a federal employee, and it was significantly lower than a typical general manager of a water district would make. And when I couple that with uh, his competence and dedication, and I agree with uh, Gail with the very positive changes that I've seen occur in this district for the time that I've been involved with it, I very much think that a 5% raise is um, in order, and I don't think it's excessive. I think it's in line with uh, his, his performance, and it's it's a way I just want to 
thank him for all the good work he's done. And I wish he would stay longer, but I understand the time comes to, uh, to move on to other endeavors. And uh, I know he's got a great one going for him right now, so. Director Reynolds. Thank you. I was on the committee that um, uh, reviewed and recommended hiring general manager Sauer many years ago and it was um, because I knew Kurt before that and saw how he performed in his previous position um, he was a very impressive man once he was hired how Kurt started this job landing on his feet running knowing nothing about the water industry and you picked this up I was able to I was very impressed on how fast you picked this up and move forward and um, and that was a very impressive thing um, over the last couple of years however I wasn't on this board to give you uh, that evaluation but um, but what I can say is the the, the first three years that I saw I worked with you um, was uh, wow 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 I was very impressed with you Kurt um, we are and so uh, and, and so that hence the positive review the um, the money we're a depressed water district and I think the money's a lot um, and so I'm not too excited about the 5% added with the, what is it, 2.5 or 2.8% for the COLA. Um, that's, that's, um, that's a lot of money. Granted, it's only for a few months, but um, I, I am concerned that it is a, a tremendous amount of money. Looking at your salary, how it's grown over the years is, is huge increases. And, um, but knowing that the, on the other hand, um, general managers of other districts are making considerably more. We're a small district and we're a depressed district. And so I, I have trouble comparing apples to apples with that. Um, and so I'm all in favor of the positive review and I'm not in love with the, uh, that large of a increase in pay. And, um, uh, and that's what I have to say. And I, uh, I looked at the need to separate whatever the automatic colas are, whatever pension you might have, whatever, 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 and say this is a merit increase. It has nothing to do with how much money you do or don't make. It's, it's a merit increase. And looking at it that way, I, I didn't have any problem with the 5%. And I certainly understand, you know, uh, Director Reynolds, uh, Mr. Whitman, uh, people saying, gee whiz, you know, it's, it's all this money. It's not a whole lot. It's like $4,300 to September. And, um, and even then, you know, not even looking at, at that, it's like it's, it's a merit increase. And you're exemplary general manager. And a person for this water district. Really, Kurt, you, yeah, we wish you would stay. We want you to go on and be happy. <laughs> and uh, I, um, I, I guess uh, where I'm at is I'm, I'm, I'm good with the, sending the uh, agreement to September 30, um, and then to with the 5% merit increase. So tonight we are voting on it's, we're voting it in a package, right, Gil? But there's two elements to it. Yes, it's, what, it's, an, it's a third amendment to Mr. Kurt's employment agreement. Pure and simple. That's all it is. And we don't actually you have to just separate those two elements out. Only if you desired to. Right now you're entertaining the, the amendment as it's drafted. Okay. And you could, you could request a, a motion. Do I have a motion? I would like to see it separated. That's a he has, there's a secondary motion for, for the board okay. to consider. Is there a second for Mr. Reynolds? Is there a second to separate? Oh, then you want to explain, Mike, uh, what you want to separate. Oh, I'd like to, I'd like to see, there are, there are two subjects at hand. And so I would like to see two votes, one for each subject. 
um, you know, one for the merit increase, um, and then uh, the other for the extension of his contract. Do I have a second? I'll second that. Yep. So then we are, the first vote is on extending the terms, the, the X date for the uh, amendment. Do we have a motion to vote on? Extending the agreement, the amendment, the term of employment uh, from April 1 to September 30th, with the knowledge that there is a 30-day right of termination. What do you say? So moved. I'll we'll second that. On uh, voice vote? Yes. Director Reynolds. Aye. 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 The second part of this is the performance review merit adjustment uh, effective April 1 a merit compensation increase of 5%. Do I have a motion to move that element? I move that. Do I have a second? I'll second it. Uh, voice vote, Mike. No. Aye. 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 And do me a favor, legally speaking, now vote for the entire amendment. Consolidate your votes, please. Ah, okay. <laughs> do I have a, an, a, a motion for... It's kind of a bell and suspenders thing, so I just... I'd like to hear it. That's fine. <laughs> Do we have a... Uh, I move that. I, <laughs> I'm confused. I can, I'm confused. Please explain. Uh, well, uh, you're gonna you, you've, you've, you, you've approved it in part. The majority has approved these two substantive changes. It, but I'd like to have a vote that clearly says that the, the district is approving this amendment number three. To Mr. Kurt's employment agreement in total as presented and reviewed tonight. Do I have Back to the original agenda, in other I words. Think, think <laughs> I think I okay. I'll second that. Okay. Uh, voice vote, please. Director Reynolds. As a whole, I vote yes. Yes. Aye. Aye. We got it. It passes. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Gilbert. Guys, Sorry. Do this. I love to confuse things. <laughs> Item 10, Resolution 19-995, Resolution of the Board of Directors designating its authorized representatives for the purpose of applying and obtaining federal financial and or state financial assistance <coughs> in the California Disaster Act. Take it away, Kurt. So as you all will recall that over the last year, year and a half, we've been working with Gary Sturdivant on the emergency response plan and the local hazard mitigation plan with California Office of Emergency Services approving the uh, local hazard mitigation plan this month. It's been forwarded to FEMA and the emergency uh, response plan uh, which will be completed hopefully, well, it will be completed by June. Hopefully it will be com completed in April. So during emergencies such as the October 12th, 13th rainstorm, where we had three major wash out, washouts and pipeline breaks and miscellaneous other locations where pipelines were exposed but didn't break. Uh, we worked with the California Office of Emergency Services to um, put in an initial claim for recovery of our expenses during that, uh, during that incident wouldn't call it a disaster. So I mentioned a couple of board meetings ago that Susan and I attended the Cal OES, Office of Emergency Services, <coughs> seminar in Yucca Valley where they told us the documents that we have to put in to apply for reimbursement from the state through the county, <coughs> excuse me, for our expenses. And one of the things that we have to do is we have to have a resolution from the board that references th up to three people on the staff um, that will be able to apply to the state to recover our costs. And what this resolution does is it authorizes the general manager, the assistant general manager for operations, and the assistant general manager controller to be the three representatives, and we don't use names because those names change. This resolution 
<clears throat> adopting this designation of applicants agent resolution for non-state agencies is good for three years. So if we have another disaster and this has already been approved, we don't have to come back to the board for yet another resolution. And it's something that we need to put in our tickler file so that short of three years from now, it needs to come back to the board for another resolution so we can apply for monies from the state emergency funds and or if FEMA is involved in the disaster, uh, monies from uh, FEMA. And I wouldn't be surprised if at that time we need another resolution to let us, let these three positions be the ones designated to apply for money from FEMA. Um, so that's what this is about. And um, I'm recommending that the board adopt this resolution so that we can apply for reimbursement of our costs for this October 12th and 13th rainstorm and any others in the future. Any public comment? Any board comment? Dr. Reynolds? Well, that doesn't sound like a very difficult uh, yeah. decision to make. Uh, <laughs> I have a, a motion. I'll make that motion. Okay. Uh, we need a voice vote on this? Sure. Aye. 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 Aye, aye, aye. All right. This was the hotly contested miscellaneous fee increase resolution. <laughs> yeah. But Ooh. this did go uh, to the Finance Committee. Like I say, we had an hour and a half to actually go over this, and it was pretty exhaustive. Uh, but it was important, and it is important. Mm -hmm. It's part of uh, uh, the updating of so many documents and regulations and, and, and fees that were outdated and, and, and language that didn't match. And, yeah. and uh, so uh, take it away, <laughs> Susan. Uh, so the recommendation tonight is that you approve the resolution that's in the packet. Um, I will apologize in advance because this is complicated. I understand that. It's really detailed. A lot of people don't like the details, and that's what this is all about, unfortunately. Um, you know, this, this goes along the lines of, um, you know, ensuring that we have appropriate cost recovery and equity so that the people who are incurring the costs are paying the costs. And, and you know, knowing that any time that people take opportunity um, of loopholes in our regulations, then those are costs that are still incurred, but they have to be passed on to others. So, so that's where the equity comes in. Um, you know, we have a mantra here that's been around for decades, development pays its own way. And if our fees don't reflect the current cost of, of, of uh, you know, expenses associated with development, then that cost is again being passed on to other ratepayers. You know, and lastly, inflation. Just like our customers deal with inflation, the water district has to, uh, you know, deal with inflation. We're not tax exempt. You know, we pay sales tax, and and so as those costs increase, we've got to pass those along to customers so that that we're maintaining balance. And and it has literally been decades since some of these fees have been addressed. So you will see some significant um, increases in some of these fees, and and fees are. Um, driven primarily from labor, equipment, and material costs. So this is the direct cost of our staff, it's the direct cost of our equipment, and any, you know, supplies, inventory, that sort of thing associated with it. So this is direct pass-through of those kinds of direct costs. Um, and these are fees, they're not water rates, so, you know, this is a cost, somebody bounces a check to us, there's a fee associated with that, and it would be based on the cost of our labor, any kind of cost, you know, from the bank. That's a poor example because those are actually regulated by law. So it doesn't matter what our cost is, there's a cost fixed by law. So so that plays into some of these. It's very complicated and I understand that and again I apologize in advance. So so we've included in here the existing Article 13 for you, you know, to reference as you uh, went through. Currently our Article 13 includes both the descriptions about the fees 
as well as the amounts of the fees. And I have discovered through a very you know, comprehensive review here after all these decades that, that that's resulted in some problems for us over time. Some fees have been inadvertently you know, deleted as we change things because it isn't simple to use the format as it's established. So uh, the, the um, policy before you tonight is to amend the existing Article 13, essentially replace it in its entirety by including just the descriptions, the words, the explanations of what the fees are about, and then to add a brand new Article 14, which includes much, um, almost nothing more than the amounts, so that you know, the descriptions change much more, much less frequently. So Article 13 would, you know, stay intact essentially much longer. And Article 14, the new Article 14, would be changing as amounts are changing going forward. And I think this is going to result in a, 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 a you know, policy that is much more uh, simple to administer going forward, and that's my objective. So. Um, this is not all the fees that are in place. This is the vast majority of the fees. Um, uh, we'll be bringing you know, the rest to you uh, later. But once we're done with all of the fees, we will be renumbering all of this to put it in a better order because things are just here, there, and everywhere. We want to put like things together in a logical order. Now, all of the fees that are in place, and even if they're not proposed for change tonight are included here because remember we're replacing the current article 13 in its entirety so every fee's got to be in here okay things that are not being changed tonight were indicated in red the titles in red so while the fee itself the amount may not be changing some of the descriptions are changing and and information about the wastewater capacity charges is a really good example of that while the, the, the fees themselves are not changing, the description changes significantly, okay? So, um, I don't know what you envision us doing here tonight, if we want to literally go through each section. I mean, I'll leave that to you. Yeah, Mickey just cringed. I saw that. <laughs> and that's why, you know, I apologize in advance. So, you know, whatever the board's pleasure is, I'm happy to do. I don't want to... Like you know. I said, we had an hour and a half to go yeah. through this pretty uh, carefully. Well, and we did with the um, Operations Committee That's as well. Correct. So, yeah. so yeah. four of our board members saw this in its entirety, and I believe the other board member was at, the, you know, their, yep. you know, observing. So I believe all of our board members saw this, you know, very detailed presentation, and it was the same thing, I mean, as we're going over tonight. So... You know, um, maybe something I would mention here is um, the Article 13.10, uh, which uh, of Exhibit A, and this is an existing um, uh, regulation. Uh, currently, uh, 54. This is the new, the new one, right? Page 63. 60. Page 64. The bottom of page 64. Uh, 64. 64, yeah, sorry. There's some strikeout language there. And I am proposing that this be eliminated. This is the current language that's in our regulations. I'm proposing that it be eliminated. This is the current policy that allows for someone who needs a one-inch water meter for fire protection purposes only to pay the water capacity charge as if it were a three-quarter inch meter. This policy was enacted more than 10 years ago when uh, the requirement uh, for new development was that either they install um, a fire sprinkler system which required a one inch meter or they put a fire hydrant within you know x number of feet of their property line the assumption at the time was that those folks are only going to use you know the greater demand the larger demand that a one inch meter will provide to them in the event of a fire we have many years of data now to show us that that is not the case. Those people with one inch meters are using the demand that is afforded to them through a one inch meter. So we are discounting that 
um, that uh, capacity charge, which is in fact creating a larger demand on our water system. We're treating it as if it's creating a three-quarter inch demand, and we're not charging for the full demand that they're using. And it was a 67 percent. 67, which is exactly the, the amount, um, the incremental, uh, you know, additional demand that a one-inch meter provides over a three-quarter inch meter. So two-thirds more water use on average with those folks with one-inch water meters. So it's significant. Um, there's also a nexus there to our basic fee. So we have the same provision you'll see on page 64 that if you require that uh, one-inch meter for fire protection purposes only, then you get the lower one-inch, you know, the lower three-quarter inch basic fee. Well, subsequent to this, you know, we've had two rate studies since this was enacted, and we've moved towards the composite three-quarter and one-inch basic fee. And so changing that at this point in time would require a new rate study. We're not going there. We're, you know, three years away, you know, ish from the next rate study anyway. We should address it at that point. But right now we could change this capacity fee and collect that additional um, capacity charges, which builds that infrastructure in the future. That's what those capacity fees are for. So these folks are using additional demand, they're tapping our, you know, our demand for, for more water, and, and that just feels like it's um, not, there's no equity there. Back to that issue, so. And altogether, there was, there were several changes that were, like, either strike out old language, uh, a, a better defini definition. Oh, hundreds of hundreds, changes. Several, yeah. several, yeah. Uh, yeah. And, uh, you know, uh, the amounts and stuff. Mm -hmm. um, Fellow directors, did you guys anything pop out at you that you want to discuss in further? Well, I just wanted to make the point, I think Susan touched on it, that these fees are primarily um, one-time or occasional yes. fees. Right. And, you know, for new development or mm -hmm. some kind of change. Mm -hmm. And if they're not properly priced, then that means that rate payers that are not doing that. Right pay more for the water ultimately. Right. So it, I think it is an equity issue, mm -hmm. and it's important that the fees reflect the cost to the district to the extent that they can, you know, unless otherwise prohibited right. by law. Well, fees, 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 <laughs> more fees, let's raise those prices. And, and I look through this document and I just see one fee after another. I, I didn't even have a chance to count how many there are, and it's just enormous, the, the number of itemized fees there are in this. Um, um, and yes, it is a big document. There is a lot to look at. Um, I, I sense that uh, the rest of the board wants to streamline and run it through. I'm not in love with that idea. Um, I, I would like to see this put into the next rate study and have it properly evaluated in a rate study and uh, that would involve the public hearings. This is a fee increase um, and I think that should go with the rate study. That's well, you know, this was explained to me because I had the same question for Stephen. Yeah. And rates are charges that apply to everybody. Mm -hmm. Fees are very specific and apply to a specific action, mm -hmm. a specific circumstance. Mm -hmm. uh, there are, some of them are elective. Yes. And so that fees are not subject to a rate study, no. but rates which apply to everybody are. And that's that's yeah. why it's not in part of a rate study. They're not rates, they're fees. Jeez, this is enormous. Well, in this enormous the front yeah, footage fee, you know, water capacity, the cost would um, probably be $30,000 for the rate consultant to do mm -hmm. this work. Yeah. You could legally com you know, commission such a, such a study, mm -hmm. but it's not subject to Proposition 218. That's the point yeah. Susan was making. Right. And Susan <coughs> did the work. <laughs> I, I appreciate all the work you did. Well, I, that's what I wanted to add is that mm -hmm. in listening to the analysis that was provided to us, um, Susan is she's up there at the top, right? Oh. <laughs> 30 years of service. Um, 31. Um, she has a fine mind. She knows the district really well. And, and she analyzed each and every one of these and went over with us 
you know, the, the labor costs involved, the travel time, mm -hmm. you know, she factored all of that in. I felt like she really, really tried to very fairly evaluate the cost um, and was successful in doing that. So at least to my satisfaction, I felt that she did everything a consultant would do, if not more. And, and again, these are, you know, things like a broken lock fee or hydrant testing or meter exchange costs. They are typically one-time costs that involve a particular customer, you know, doing a, a one-time action. It's not an ongoing cost. Yeah, these aren't being applied to everybody. Yeah. And they're not applied constantly. And everybody pays for them if they're not. Right. Um, yes, that's, that's the other thing is that it's a person's fee and they should pay it. It should not go to the rest of the white papers. Right. And I was in the finance, was it finance yeah. that did that? Mm -hmm. I sat in on that. I'm very impressed with your work, Susan. Thank you. You've thought this through very carefully. And I uh, think that we should go ahead and pass it. Yeah, if that level of analysis hadn't been done, I might be more of a mind to yeah. um, de defer this. But I you know, felt that the appropriate level of research and analysis was done in order to come up with fees that reflect the cost mm -hmm. of, of doing the work. Well, and we generate already, uh, Director Reynolds, uh, well over $200,000 in fees, so. Public comment. <coughs> <laughs> Thank you, public comment. Gail Austin, resident of Joshua Tree. Um, I sat in on uh, both meetings and listened to it twice, the, the presentation, and um, I was so impressed with, it's a mathematic formula of it takes this long to travel to the farthest end of the district, um, we're going to split that and do an average, that's the amount of time it's going to take. Um, everything was done with formula and in a cohesive unit. And I agree with what Director Hun said that, that it was done in such a way with such detail that we could understand exactly why. And then also we haven't been getting these fees. Um, it's so far back and, and you know, there's somewhere developers can just come in and ask for something and get it for free and that shouldn't happen. Um, so. Um, I like the idea of implementing it as soon as possible so that more money comes into the district, not from the rate payers as a whole, but from each person. And also, the education really helped me in that I didn't understand when we built a building why we paid this fee or that fee or, or did this or that. And so sitting in, I was able to understand a lot more about what each of these fees entails. Um, and so. Um, yeah, finance is fascinating. Thanks, <laughs> 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 That was excellent. I wish Bob was here. That was outstanding. It's nice to be here. Mm -hmm. Stephen Whitman, Joshua Tree. I hate to be redundant. I've attended several of the finance committee meetings, and they are very detailed. And I really appreciate the four or five directors that were at the last one. Don't ask me how the hell that happened. Uh, but none of these details are in this room tonight. No one's going to watch Bob's tape and know what was discussed. Now, there's something really wrong with that. If we don't have to have detail at board meetings, then why don't we just cancel board meetings? And we'll just have 9.30 meetings in the morning in the hell with the public. Sorry. I, I understand your frustration. <coughs> and actually, that was why I thought about tabling this discussion, because it is so dense for where it could have had the finance committee treatment of exhaustive, picking apart mm -hmm. type of analysis. Um, was there anything that you wanted to bring up out of this? Because you were there. Anything you... Who? You. 
I, I think I missed that one. <laughs> I thought so too. <laughs> I, and that's what I understand. I understand I not people's be critical because I don't think I was there to listen. I understand people's frustration exactly with that. Did you get a chance to look at it? Is there something that you wanted to pick out and discuss? We can do it. No, I did not download the agenda for this meeting. I can do that on the internet, but um, not right now. <laughs> What I can't recall is um, to, you know, to what detail um, in the agenda packets you know, for that meeting um, it went into, but it, it seemed to me like there was a pretty fair amount of detail, but I guess my point is on a weighty issue like this, um, we could uh, work to ensure that there's a fair amount of detail and explanation, at least in writing, so that something gets posted up you know, on the web, so that because it, it's 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 tough in the course of a board meeting in order to conduct all of our business to go into the level of detail we mm -hmm. go into in the committee. So, but but I but I see uh, uh, Steve's point. I think it, I think it's a good one. Um, it, it's hard if somebody's just watching tonight to really understand all that went into it, and you know, the, it's like take our word for it. And, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I understand. Right. Right. <laughs> And uh, the the packet for the finance committee was pretty much what we're seeing here. It yes. has the two different yes. the comparison of the exhibits and stuff. Yes, that's uh, my uh, recollection. Yeah, yeah. and uh, but I say having that hour and a half to basically, you know, we did talk about other things, but the majority of it was on this. Mm -hmm. um, any other public comment? Any other board comment? Do I have a motion to a motion on item 11? I move that the board approve resolution number 19-996, increasing miscellaneous fees. Do I have a second? I'll second that. Voice vote. Nope. Yes. Yes. Aye. Item 12, consider outsourcing of annual standby administration. I believe this is Susan. Yes. Two. Yes. <laughs> so the recommendation tonight is that you approve this contract with NBS uh, for standby administration. Uh, the district, as you know, in this year's budget, uh, there was a, uh, a line item, a project for the parcel audit. Uh, and this is the same company that's performing the parcel audit. Uh, Joshua Basin Water District uh, has nearly 13,000 individual parcels in the water district. And there's a kind of complex <coughs> rate matrix uh, for our standby fees. And, and the setup of all those parcels was done in the late 80s or early 90s, long before the technology that is in place today, uh, you know, was being utilized. It was done manually with, you know, measurements and things like that. And so all these years, we've really wanted to look at that again and make sure now with the technology that's available that, that we're doing the right thing. So that's what that's about. Um, but at my request, NBS also provided a proposal for ongoing standby administration. Um, it feels like a good opportunity to consider outsourcing this work. Um, I'm of the opinion that this is not our core work. We, we devote a fraction of one employee's time to collecting 17% of the water district's revenue, operating revenue while we're collecting 69% of our of our revenues through water and we devote well over 50% uh, you know of uh, the, the full time of more than 50% of our employees to do that um, that's what our core work is uh, delivery of water so um, there's a huge effort you know associated with uh, the the standby uh, analysis and billing you know we've got to pull all the records from here and then send that to the county for collection on the tax rolls we devote about 400 year uh, years yeah <laughs> hours a year to that project and we need about a hundred more hours so uh, we've determined there's a few problems that we've identified we're not spending enough time at this work 
uh, one of the challenges at this point is that uh, our software doesn't really work well for this. Uh, it's minimal, has hardly any reporting, poor analysis tools. And we found out at a conference recently that um, the only other client that our software provider has using uh, the standby or who was using the standby software isn't using it anymore because the software didn't work for them. So we have no other client um, utilizing this standby software and there's no chance that they're going to improve um, the software without substantial cost to us. So that's a, a big consideration for us. Um, also, you know, this analysis of the changes to the county zones requires an engineering review. NBS would do that all as part of their analysis every single year and make sure that that never gets out of date. We would have to enlist the help of a, you know, an, an engineering consultant to help us with that work. We'd probably use NBS to do it for us. So, um, well anyway, uh, you know, we, uh, the time to do this is also now. Um, you know, we start our standby process around March. We hold the public hearing, remember, in June. Got to get all this information to the county no later th than August 10th, the final you know, report. So timing is now. NBS is analyzing all of this information. They've got our rate study. They're doing the GIS analysis. They understand, you know, how the system works. They're doing all this cleanup. Um, if we take this back, we're going to have to bring all this cleanup into our records, you know, um, incorporate all that. It just feels like a good um, time to make this transition really cost effective um, as well. So uh, this is the same company that's been the administrator of our Copper Mountain Mesa Assessment District for over 20 years. Uh, they charge us around $10,000 a year uh, for a thousand parcels out there. This is, you know, nearly 13,000 parcels and it's going to be 20250 a year is the starting price. They've plugged in a you know, cost of living increase as most contracts do. Uh, that has been plugged into the table that's on page 82 of the packet. Um, you know, we've got to put in a big up, upfront software upgrade if, if we're going to do this. And then there's ongoing support for that. You pay 20% of the cost of the software each year in support. Um, payroll, you know, regular time, then we've got to add some overtime here. This isn't working for us. We're billing all of these locked meter charges now. There's a huge collections effort associated with that, and we can devote all this time we save here to actually collecting money that we're billing for water accounts. Um, this engineering evaluation that has to be done, you can see that, you know, our cost over the first five years, 134000 105 to NBS. Now, some of those are one-time costs. That software, you know, cost the 25000 up front is a one-time. But even going forward, you know, our cost is, you know, somewhat more than their cost. Um, I think that combined with the fact that this is clearly not our core work and our strategic plan says we need to get back to the core function here. We're too spread out. This is something that can be outsourced. Now's the time to do so, and that's my recommendation. So we've got the uh, consultant scope of services and the contract in here as well. So I'm happy to answer any questions. Any questions from the board? I have a question. Um, Susan, can you speak to whether or not there could be some cost benefit here because of having somebody that is dedicated to this? That, um, I can't speak enough about that. <laughs> you know, I, I think through the parcel audit, um, uh, something else has been identified that's a potential issue. So I think, you know, you have people who do this regularly. They have really robust software, right. you know. This is what they do. Right. It's substantially, you know, it's a substantial part of all that they do. So, so I think, you know, again, we're devoting, you know, less than 20% of one employee's time to this effort, which generates 17% of our revenue. We're really shortchanging this. Right. We don't have the knowledge, the expertise, the engineering, uh, you know, many issues here um, mm -hmm. need more attention. And I think you're absolutely right. We're, um, yeah, you know, my, the my fact view. is the parcel yeah. audit, you know, um, I've heard from peers that, you know, a parcel audit will, uh, you know, save you more than you pay to have the work done because they're going to find mistakes, mm -hmm. you know, that, you know, 13,000 parcels. Mm -hmm. It's a big job. It's a really big job. So. That answer? Yes, it okay. is. Thank you. Other directors? I had a question. 
Uh, go ahead. No, I'm fine. Okay, I had a question on uh, page 82. Mm -hmm. um, there is a chart, mm -hmm. um, and uh, you know, so I'm I'm focused automatically to the bottom line, mm -hmm. and and so I just want a little clarification, if you could, so I have a clear understanding. Um, uh, total um, uh, Joshua Basin Water District over five years would be 134,109. One hundred thirty-four thousand one hundred nine dollars, mm -hmm. as compared to um, what it is. This what it would have cost us. No, that's or that's, that's next. That's, then that's total the, NBS over five years, one hundred five thousand okay, three eighty-two. So going forward. Those two are the comparison. Okay. Then remember, we've got up front a twenty-five thousand dollars software upgrade, which isn't a factor after the first five years. You know. Okay. That's a one time, and and that's an estimate. That's simply an estimate because we haven't even asked. The question yet. So then, on a go going forward basis, this says Joshua Basin Water District cost is twenty three thousand one forty seven a year versus twenty two three fifty eight. Okay. Okay, and so um, the savings then would be the difference between the one thirty four and the one o five. That's the starting savings, and okay. then you know going then forward. Going forward, the savings it's would a pretty, be it's a pretty. It's a wash in my mind. That looks like a wash. It's pretty know. close yeah. going forward, yeah. um, but yeah. the initial cost, but the going forward is still less money by outsourcing this. Is, yes, okay. exactly. And, and Director uh, Reynolds, if I may, and Susan, correct me if yeah. I'm wrong. What isn't in this chart is freeing up of some 300 hours of employee time. Yeah, there's Understood. still going to be some employee time. Yes, to work with MBS and. To facilitate all facilitate. this, right. Mm -hmm. But we're estimating 400 hours a year now mm -hmm. of an employee, mm -hmm. which... But we need 500. Yeah, so <laughs> some 300 plus hours of an employee's time could be directed towards other activities. Mm -hmm. And that's in finance. Yes. Right. Um, uh, going forward, is it possible to tickle the calendar and for a report five years from now and say, yep, we really did save this money? I can tell somebody to do that. <laughs> <laughs> we'll put it on the Google calendar. Uh, <laughs> Bev, tickler file. Uh -huh. Yeah. You know, uh, a prediction of savings is wonderful, you know, and the difference is pretty minor. The savings, the, the initial savings is substantial, and, and, and that makes it... Um, well, and I think that analysis um, won't be able to be achieved, Director Reynolds, if we go to NBS because we will never do that software upgrade, which we are simply guessing at 25000 mm -hmm. Could be more, you know, I, I'm doubting it would be less, but, I mean, we're never going to do that, so we won't have that cost to compare to, okay. you know. It'll be interesting to see how the standby fee collection amounts uh, Absolutely, change over time. time. That's yes. probably even yeah. more of a, yeah. a measure. Well, and this is a company that really wants to standardize things. For example, you know, we, um, we have no covenant, no requirement in the Copper Mount Mesa Assessment District to foreclose, where most assessment districts do. If you don't pay, then they're going to foreclose on your property. We have no covenant. We wouldn't agree to it. So there's no requirement to do that. Um, but uh, they want to send out the delinquent letters. You know, you haven't paid, we're going to inform you. And so, you know, a policy has been created. They work, you know, very systematically. They're really on, on top of their business. Again, this is what they do, you know. Mm -hmm. and, and I just can't emphasize enough how, you know, how important that is and, and what little attention that we devote to this really important, you know, revenue source. And they're catching things that yes. are important. Yes. Oh, yes. Yeah. Uh, any public comment? Oh, that's their name, NBS. There's, there's no acronym. That's the name. That's the name of the company, NBS. Tom Flowen, Joshua Tree North. I was, um, as I frequently do, coming through my mm -hmm. uh, budget for 18 and 19, 2018 and 2019, leisurely reading. And I noticed <laughs> on um, page three of this that uh, 
what we're projecting to uh, to gain from these uh, standby fees for this year was about one million one hundred and thirty nine thousand yeah. yes, dollars <coughs> and that uh, just the cost of administering all this stuff through this company is like twenty Right. Three twenty-five, twenty-six thousand dollars a year. So there's a proportionality here that I think yeah. that favors us <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah. a lot. Mm -hmm. We benefit from their expertise, right. and uh, so I think that's uh, um, I think that's considerable. And I, I, I I'm in favor of outsourcing this uh, this kind of stuff. These there's something on the website that indicates that these uh, fees. There's a few things, but. Um, these fees are used uh, to fund our payments on the Morongo Basin pipeline. Um, locally, uh, our main lines, our storage reservoirs, our wells, and uh, pumping stations, and uh, possibly, is it production staff? Um, I think pumping power. Mm. Power. Do we buy our water with uh, with this money? That's the other one. Okay. But I, um, you know, I just, um, I, I think we can't do everything here with a staff of whatever, 20, 23, 23 people within uh, the boundaries of this facility. If we want to keep doing all these more and more techni technical things that are required of us, we're going to need more staff, we're going to need bigger buildings, more air conditioning, more heating, we're going to, uh, more retirements, more everything, uh, if we don't. Um, uh, outsource some of these things and also too I still say that we get the benefit of specific expertise on an area these folks are dedicated to this stuff specifically and there's an accuracy factor there thank you you know one of the things uh, which you prompted me uh, to think about is that this is is a a task that can really be sort of bundled up in one you know, fell swoop, so to speak, and outsourced. We don't have many things like that. You know, the, there are never any customer service calls. Nobody has to roll, you know, as a result of standbys. I mean, this really is something of very few that I can think of that really is, you know, quite, you know, um, uh, on its own that can really be, you know, parsed out effic efficient, efficiently and effectively. Yeah. Any other comments, questions? Do I have a motion? I move that we recommend approval of the contract with NBS for standby administration. Second. I'll second it. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank right you. On. Thank you. Right on. All right. And thank you. Impacts. Recharge impact. <coughs> okay, I'll, I'll take this one. Oh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> but first, I want to. Well, it's for information only, and the reason it's here is because uh, Susan did the initial staff report and she found interesting data. So why did she do the interesting the, the initial staff report? The final project performance report for the Department of Water Resources Recharge Project grant <coughs> was submitted recently. <laughs> The DWR recharge grant was in 2013-14. This is the last report in 2019 mm -hmm. that we have to, had to send to DWR. So we've been reporting to DWR on project, and yes, it's still there, for the past five years. And it's just a requirement of the free grant <laughs> and demonstrates that grants, while greatly appreciated, are not free uh, to staff time. But because of that work, what she found, and she thought the board would find this information interesting and the public, is that while water levels at our five wells have continued to decline since recharge began in 2014, the rate of decline in water levels has decreased by 47%. Okay, so our aquifers are going down 47% less per year or per five year period. Um, than they had been prior to recharge. So the, in the five years from 2013 to present was 8.8 .8 feet in decline compared to the 16.7 feet of decline over the prior five years 
2008 to 2013. So the first five years is 2013 to 2013 to, to 2018, and then compared to 2008 to 2013. So I just wanted to bring that to the board and the public that the recharge is working, um, and also mention to the board as I'll cover in the next subject that we started at 500 acre feet going into the into the Joshua Tree sub basin. We're pulling about 1,100, 1,200 acre feet out. So as we're moving up. From 500 to 600 to 700 this year to or this coming year to 800 acre feet, that rate of decline is going to less, lessen or increase even more um, than it had been prior to the recharge project, which is I, I think it's interesting. Susan thought it was interesting enough to bring to the board and the public, and that's the end of the report. If you have any questions, you can ask Susan. <laughs> <laughs> Was that nice water level monitoring table included in, that's available online, I guess people can see it online. Page 88, you mean? Uh, 88. Yeah. In the packet. Any board comments, questions? I just want to comment that during um, the rate study, we had a couple different options for rate increases and we adopted the one that was more gradual but as a board we did um, include uh, more rapidly increasing our uh, rate of recharge than the most conservative option and I'm really glad that we did that. I think that you know especially when I look at something like uh, from 2008 to 2013 16.7 feet, that's a pretty significant drop in yeah. five years. Yeah. And I'm, I'm really glad that this district has taken the bull by the horns and is addressing, you know, it's, it's aquifer, even though there are other aquifers in the state that are dro dropping much more rapidly, mm -hmm. you know, the, the time would come when this could become a real issue for the district. And, and we never know, I mean, this year was an incredibly wet year. So we're going to have plenty of water availability, but we, we've had five out of the last seven years of drought, and we can have extended yes. drought again. And the time will come when that water is not available one year. So, so um, this, this is heartening news to me. I know part of this has been water conservation, as you mentioned in our committee meetings. So, for, um, but it obviously is working. And, uh, that, that gives me some solace mm -hmm. as a resident. Yeah. Anyone else? No. Public comment. Something. I have something. Oh, go ahead, Mike. Um, in your report, we're 47 percent less of the water being drawn than what it used to be, or compared to recharge versus usage. Um, and that's a good improvement. The, um, the damage from the water, the aquifers getting lower and lower and lower and lower um, is, is a very difficult thing to reverse. Mm -hmm. um, and, and so even though we're moving in the right direction, um, I'm sure going to be a whole lot happier when we are 100% sustainable. Um, when we are at status quo and when the water coming out meets the water coming in, um, that stops. It's kind of like pollution, you know, when the when cars are driving by and all the smog in the air and the pollution gathers in the sky and we're breathing that. It takes a long time for that to clear out and we're drawing water out of the aquifer. And, and we're still drawing water out of the aquifer faster than we're recharging it. Um, and so th this isn't uh, uh, something to say, well, golly gee, I'm happy. I'm, I'm not happy. Um, I, I th and, and what we are moving in the right direction, and that's cheering me up slightly. That's all. So you'd be happy to assign more water for recharge? I would be happy to see more water. I'd like to see a one-to-one -one number. I'd like to see that aquifer stop declining. Thank you. I'll be glad when that happens. And we're moving in that direction. Public comment? 
Tom Flowen, Joshua Tree North. Uh, I, as I understand it, uh, and I'm sorry, I, I missed, I distracted myself out here, and I missed the first part of uh, Director Reynolds' uh, comment. But um, I think we know that uh, if um, the drop in our two aquifers gets down to a certain point, we're going to have to chase the water. We're going to have to uh, pull pipe and re-drill which um, it seems to me is, is, would be very, very expensive. So it's just uh, uh, to increase our uh, water purchases, we're doing something on the positive <coughs> side, and we, we get the water uh, rather than spending the money on re-drilling uh, re uh, five wells sooner or later and, uh, and chasing an uh, ever-decreasing uh, water supply. Thank you. El Marquez, Sunfair Community of Joshua Tree. Uh, my comment is more on a question. Uh, I'd like to find out, uh, since we've been importing water since 2016, I presume, since October? 14. We've been importing since 2013? 2014. 2014. Anyways, uh, from that time till now, how much of that water has actually uh, gone into the uh, aquifer from the recharge? Or has the water actually been into the recharge yet or the uh, basin all the water that's been recharged has reached the basin except for that water that adheres t electronically to the water parcel so uh, i don't know how many acre feet 15 20 2000 some 2500 acre feet uh, some two percent of it evaporates according to usgs studies and the USGS says that um, all of the water that didn't reach the aquifer from last year's recharge reaches the aquifer at next year's recharge. And then every year that we recharge, the water that's still in the uh, column that goes from the recharge pond to the aquifer uh, will be the same amount of water. So it's basically the amount of water that we recharge less 2%. So approximately from the time that you uh, import water to the, uh, the recharge uh, ponds, it takes approximately a year to, uh, to reach the aquifer? Is that what you're saying? No, it percolates uh, depending on the year, depending on the condition of the recharge ponds, percolates from some 10 to 18 feet per day. It takes approximately whatever 20 feet divided into 460 is uh, to reach the aquifer. So that's a little over your year then? No, it's about uh, 45 days. For the first day of recharge, to get down to the aquifer, it travels about 18 feet a day. Okay, so less, less than four months then? Yes. Okay, thank you. Just got to write that check. <laughs> and speaking of recharge. <laughs> yes. Speaking of recharge, let me talk about the latest uh, MWA options we have for recharge. So our current budget for 2018-19 allotted $418,000 for recharge for 700 acre feet. Uh, we completed that recharge in the fall of 2018. The actual cost was $427,000 because when we put the budget together uh, they hadn't decided on their final percentage rate increase so we were off by $9,000. For the 2019 2020 budget year, which is coming up starting July 1st, and we're preparing the budget for use to be done by June 19th, uh, we would allocate $505,600 for 800 acre feet. Okay. We were planning on recharging this fall. However, on March 11th, Assistant General Manager Ban met with uh, Mojave Water Agency personnel and we were informed that in order to do required repairs to their recharge water line, pressure tanks, and their reservoir, they will need to have our recharge water received from them by no later than August 30th of this year. So we can't wait um, and do it in the winter, in the September, October, November era. Uh, we, need, we need to either start recharging in April, um, and be done by July 11th or start recharging May 3rd and be done by 
August 11th, assuming that there's no interruption of service. And you'll recall that most every year there's an interruption in service from lightning storms uh, hitting transformers and knocking out electricity to the October 12th, 13th flood that actually flooded the, uh, the vault at the uh, turnout. And um, so we could be done either way if we did it this year before August. Um, we would need to obtain board approval to pay for the recharge that was going to be in next year's budget and take that money, which is available, and, and recharge starting in April, May and be done so that they can do their work uh, starting in September. And that, again, is also weather dependent because their facilities need to be uh, worked on during certain temperature ranges. Um, or we can decide to wait until after the construction is complete. We've got our budget. We've got our $505,000 budgeted. And take recharge water in January through May of 2020, which would put us back on the spring schedule, which the following year we'd be on the spring schedule again, and we'd still have the 2019-20 rates because they go up in July. So if we buy all 800 acre feet in this fiscal year before July 11th, our cost would be 800 acre feet times 610 or $488,000, rather than the 505,000 it'll cost next year. That's $17,000 less expensive than waiting for WA to do their repairs and us taking water in the spring. So we're recommending that we use the 2019-2020 projected funding in this fiscal year and then not recharge in 2019-20 which would save us $17,000. But I want to be clear with the board. We can do it before September or we can do it in the spring. We can wait until the budget's approved and do it in the spring. The aquifer is many thousands of years old and it really doesn't care whether you do it in July or February. End of report. So what I need is you want us to move the money now and tell MWA we're recharging in April or you want us to just budget it and recharge uh, next spring. So you're actually saying not recharge this year? No, if we recharge now, see we already recharged in the fall of 2018. Our budget ends June 30th. Our new budget will have another 505,000 that we can move forward. So basically we'll recharge two times in this year and we won't recharge in 1920. Or we can just recharge in 1920. 2020. So, yeah, 2019, 2020. <laughs> Well, yeah. just because it, it, it's written, uh, staff is recommending we use the 2019-20 projected funding in this fiscal year and not recharge in 2019-20. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and you'll save 17000 Now, in discussions with Mark, who's not here tonight because he's ill, um, he says, we'll do it, whatever the board wants. We're in the midst of bringing people on and getting capital improvement replacement projects underway in April, May, and June. This is going to require some staff time to get the turnout ready, get the pressure reduction stations ready, and monitor the work. Randy Little and his production crew can do that. Um, and Mark said we'll make it work. So I just want you to know that's in the, the operational aspect is there, but it's still a recommendation to recharge now. But if the board wants to wait, it's not going to hurt. It would just cost it'll a little cost, bit. but it won't hurt. <laughs> yeah, well, I, in, in the monetary world, it'll hurt $17,000. Yeah. Yeah. Director's comments? Well, I'm still in pain from that $60,000 hurt, and uh, every opportunity to um, help alleviate that is a positive move forward. Um, 17,000 bucks and it's just a matter of timing when we spend the money do we spend the money 
on this this do we borrow basically we're going to borrow next year's budget mm -hmm. to implement it into this year um, because Mojave Water Agency is not going to be able to send us the water where we would have normally have taken it um, and so we have an we have a choice we can push it forward um, and save 17,000 or we can just say no and wait till it's going to be budgeted and spend the extra money um, it's the same money but the difference is another seventeen thousand dollars that we don't have to we don't have to uh, we can possibly save from this so it's um, I, I'm I'm for it and staff really doesn't care you must care which would staff prefer to do take it now Six of one, half a dozen of the other. We will get it done. I say we'll for it now. Second. So, well, I appreciate, first I want to say I appreciate um, Assistant General Manager Van saying we'll do what it takes to get it done. That's a really great attitude and spirit. And then I just want to know, what does Pleistocene water say to Holocene water when they mean? <laughs> <laughs> But I'm I'm in I'm in favor of um, uh, taking the del delivery now if uh, staff thinks that we can manage that and also get our capital improvement stuff done. So. Any uh, views on this from the public? Hello, Mark. Hello, Sunshine Community. Uh, I'd like you ask the question, is the Mojave Water Agency still banking water in our aquifer? Um, there's still an agreement for them to be able to uh, bank water in our aquifer and we receive 10% of whatever they bank, but, excuse me, 15% of whatever they bank, as I recall. So either 10 or 15%. 15. 15. But they've not put any water into the aquifer. Well, the allocation from the state just went up to 70%. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. So, yeah. So, so we might see a change in that. There'll probably be more. Yeah. It, probably, it could end up more. So this is a good year to be taking yeah. it out. Yeah. Yeah. Because they have it. Yeah. Do I have a motion? I'll make that motion. Comment? You just no, said that. I'll comment. I'll, 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 I'll second it. And so the motion is to... The staff recommends using the 2019-20 projected funding in this fiscal year mm. of 808 acre feet uh, for a total cost of uh, 488,000. Yes. I wasn't listening. It was 488. <laughs> oh, excuse me. Thank you, Kurt. <laughs> we spent 418. We'll spend. Uh, 505. We'll spend. So four hundred and eighty-eight thousand this year versus five hundred and five thousand next year. A savings of seventeen thousand dollars. Rounded. Director Luckman, you moved. Yes, I moved. Do I hear a second? Okay. Um, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I moved. Oh, and Director oh, Luckman seconded. Second. Director Reynolds moved. All in. All in favor? Aye. 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 Well, fourteen update. Hmm. So I should have mentioned this uh, when you were all talking about adjusting the agenda. I can make this report. It was prepared by Mark Van, who's been on. He's been on over a year now, and he's taken over all of the Well 14 planning and activities and uh, lab reports, et cetera. And he has more extensive knowledge on um, what's gone on with the uh, well, and he also has a more extensive knowledge of what four log treatment means, how it's done, why it's done, etc. So if you want me to go over this, I can tonight. I'd recommend that we wait until the next board meeting when Mark will be here. And that'll give you time to read it. Um, just kind of a summary of... The summary is that 
Well 14 has been off about three years uh, because of the Tri-County Pump, Lane Christian and L.O. Lynch being hired and uh, engineering costs from Dudek. We spent $1.2 million on the well. We've been unable to bring it back online. The video shows, the downhole video of the casing shows that the well is in good shape. We've been very close to bringing it back online several times and then one total coliform uh, sample comes back uh, present. And uh, the standards for bringing a well back online once it's offline are extremely, are higher uh, than if you're just testing your well uh, weekly or monthly. So in order to uh, bring this well back online, the Department of uh, the um, State Water Resource Control Board would need to approve a four log treatment, which is basically we would install pipe around the perimeter of well 14 underground. The water would come out of the well, it would go into that pipe and be dosed with chlorine for an, ex for an extended period of time rather than just going directly into the distribution system. Um, that four log treatment is actually recommended by SWRCB. They're the ones that recommended it to Big Bear when they had a similar problem. Uh, it's worked there, it's worked at several other places. We would need um, approval from State Water Resource Control Board, take some more samples, show them what's there, uh, approval to install the system with recognition that, that their suggested four log treatment uh, would prove to be effective. In fact, we'll probably build it to an eight log system, which just gives the water more time to be exposed to chlorine. And then, it, uh, and then it could be put back online. Uh, the estimated cost for piping and appurtenances, which would be installed by our mainline, by our capital improvement replacement crew, um, would be approximately $200,000. Uh, there's also consideration for installing a sodium hypochlorite generator, which produces chlorine on site. Um, 29 and high, uh, high Desert use the same system that we'd be talking about here. We'd, we'd be able to stop buying chlorine, transporting chlorine, and storing chlorine. It would be cr produced and go into the system essentially the same day or time. And again, the details are in Mark Band's experience in the head. Um, a fiberglass building, appurtenances, would be installed on the pipeline so that when the state finally comes up with a chromium-6 MCL, we already have the connections to hook up the chromium-6 treatment floor uh, system, which will probably, although we haven't decided or proven yet, that stannous chloride is the way to go. And we'd need $5,000 for State Water Resource Control Board permitting. So if you did all of that, uh, it would be 367000 If you don't do the sodium hypochlorite generator, you can take $112,000 out of that number. Um, and it would take three to four months to bring the well back online once the permits were received from SWRCB. Thank you. Uh, any comments from the board? Yes, I do. Um, if we were to go with the four log system, and um, was it my understanding that they would incorporate the ability to add on that um, that that next hydro, whatever it is uh, for the um, chromium six. That would be stannous treatment. chloride. We wouldn't put in the stannous chloride treatment system, right. but we'd have the system installed or the capability of hooking up to the four log system. Um, and that's, you know, another $5,000, $10,000 just, right. just for that connection. And so if and, we. And also, hence, the forward planning of putting in a shed to get. Uh, the, the sodium hypochlorite generator and the chromium-6 treatment facility out of the elements. 
Right. Um, now, Mark made a recommendation on this. What was his recommendation? <clears throat> well, at the finance or the water operations meeting, his, his recommendation is going to be that we do all of this. Okay. Is that what you were recalling? Yeah, I don't remember it that way. And that's another reason I'd like to, I'd like minutes. Um, I thought he had recommended um, the other way around, is to go with the four log to incorporate the ability to add on um, easily. And uh, then when the time came, we would already be ready and prepared to add that on. And, and I could be wrong on that, but... Yeah, um, the, the recommendation, the discussion... I'm sure the, would like minutes. ...at the ops meeting was do the four log treatment, uh, add the sodium hypochlorite generator, and you'll see in the strategic plan when it comes to you in its next draft, it's, there are sodium hypochlorite generators at all five well sites. Uh, the strategic plan is also going to call for uh, well exploration and figuring out where to, to drill the next well because our capacity is going to increase over the years. and. Um, you know, one of your wells is 30 years old, and hopefully it'll be 50 years old before it goes out of production. And and the only thing about chromium-6 was just to have the connections and planned and installed so that when the state does come up with an MCL, if we need it, which we probably will, um, we don't have to retrofit the existing four log system. Okay. Um, if I remember right also, um, um, we have two primary wells that are serving. There, there are big producers. And if one of those were to go down, we would be in big trouble. Um, is, that, is that right? Wells 10, 14, and 15 uh, produce 85% of the water that is consumed by this community. Well, 16 produces water for about 250 homes. Well, 17 produces water for about 250 homes uh, and the college. Um, all of the community except uh, the service the service area of well 16, we could retrofit uh, some valving over by the college to get to the area served by well 17, but it's going to take several weeks. So 10, 14, and 15 have provided the water that goes into the C tanks, which is distributed to all the other tanks, except for B and A, B, B1 and A. So well 14 is down. If well 15 or well, excuse me, well 14 is down. If well 15 or well 10 go down, then our option to provide water to some 80% of the population here is to put well 14 back online. So it's critical that we get well 14 back online. Sure is. And if it's not, four log uh, hasn't been done and that occurs, then in fact we went over this in one of our tabletop exercises, our emergency tabletop exercises. Um, we would call the state and simply tell them that we're going to put the well 14 back online. And if it tested positive, then we'd have to issue a boil order. But once we get it back online, if it doesn't test positive, then we don't have to do the multi-day uh, step testing that's required because it's offline. It would be online. So in a way... You, An emergency could be a saving grace. Yeah. <laughs> and then... How could that be? We go um, to Cal OES and get reimbursed for the emergency costs. <laughs> What I was getting at is my concern is um, with the two primary wells that are in operation 10 and 15, um, they're, they're doing a fine job, we're up to par, everything's great, but mm -hmm. what if, mm -hmm. if something were to go down, um, if we had well 14, which has been down for way too long, back online, we, we have the ability to keep everybody supplied with water without having to make drastic measures. Yes. Um, the next question would be, what is the life expectancy, The um, how old is well 14 and how long will it last once we get it back on? 
Well, it's 33 years old. I can be 34 years old by now. Mm -hmm. um, the downhole video of the casing shows that the casing is in good shape. According to Mark, the soils up here are less corrosive mm -hmm. to metal than other places. And mm -hmm. uh, this well could serve another th uh, 20 to 30 years. Now, and all the equipment in it has been rebuilt and is new. So. Okay. Um, we're in it pretty deep already. Mm -hmm. Let's get that thing fixed. That's thank sentiments you. of staff. <laughs> I can yeah. assure you, agree with that <laughs> statement. I appreciate that. Thank you. That's all I have. Public comment. Gail Austin, Joshua Tree. I just have one question. Could um, hazard mitigation and all of that, could we get a grant for the chlorine maker? Because in an emergency, we might not be able to get chlorine from down below, and our water supply would be without chlorine. Would it possibly be able to, to receive some kind of grant to help with getting that part of the package? Well, that's an idea I hadn't yeah. thought of. Thank you. Look at all the sites. Yeah, you know. over over the course of, if the board decides to do it, of yeah. installing five and maybe six yeah. sodium hypochlorite sites. Um, that's an excellent idea. You an engineer? <laughs> Here for public comment. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you. District General Council Report, Mr. Gill. Uh, slight, minor comment about the legislature that's a process right now. Still early the legislative process, but there was a bill this afternoon that came to my attention. It's about taxing uh, water uh, rebate vouchers and, and conservation incentives. There's actually a bill, Assembly Bill 533, uh, by uh, Assemblymember Holden, that exempts from state income tax water rebates and uh, conservation vouchers. I didn't even think there was a need for this. But apparently people are getting taxed on this. The problem, potential problem with this bill is it applies to personal income tax and corporations. And one taxpayer advocate association opposes the bill. They want corporations excluded out of there. And you can understand that position, if you will. It's that taxpayer group that's opposing this bill, and it's very early in the let it, it hasn't, it's uh, the California Tax Reform Association. They like the bill, it's great. They don't think people should have to pay on these small rebates they get. But these, these corporations that get huge rebate vouchers, I mean huge. If, if you've paid any attention to Los Angeles, city of Los Angeles and some of the corporate rebates in years gone by, enormous. Uh, they don't think they should be uh, given this tax exclusion advantage. Keep your eye on it, it's kind of interesting. It just caught my attention. There are a lot of other bills too, but they're still in the early stages. I'll talk about them later. But that's it, Assembly Bill uh, 533. Uh, Senator uh, Assemblyman Holden authored that bill. But there's another association that co-authored the bill, and that's Kurt. Kurt, the co-author of the bill I just spoke about is the California Water Efficiency Partnership, the Metropolitan Water District, and the Southern California, uh, Southern California, and the Water Now Alliance. Aren't, isn't this district a member of that? No, the, no? no we're a member of the California Water CWSA. Uh, it isn't the California Water Efficiency Partnership. Okay. No. Anyway, that's it for today. General Manager report. Um, water conservation for last month was approximately 20%, mm -hmm. or approximately 18.5% water conservation since June compared to 2013. Now, I don't have anything else because we've been working on redistricting <laughs> and uh, a couple things, couple things <laughs> including hiring of the CIRP crew um, and other stuff. We'll let that go this time. Thank you. <laughs> uh, directors, comments, reports on meetings attended. Public outreach consultant Kathleen Radnich. Well, I'm happy to report that the five year Joshua National Park, Joshua Basin Water District agreement has been renewed. <coughs> I just got notified it's uh, in the hot hands. We've signed it. They initiated it. They want our signature. We sent it back. They're signing it, and I should have it in my hands Monday. 
So everything looks good. So we're working with the Josh Tree National Park, continuing the program for the native plant, you know, awareness, outreach, training for another five years or so. And I want to thank you again, Gil, for helping to initiate that. That goes way back, doesn't way it? Way back, yeah. Hooray <laughs> right for you. Anyway, so that's just kind of some good news. Good. And then, of uh, course, Water Education Day. Quick reminder, it is March 31st, 1 to 4 p.m. The native plant sale starts at 1 p.m. sharp. If you come early, have fun standing in line. <laughs> uh, the State Water Resources Control Board, I mentioned last meeting, they will be here They for people who want to talk to them about water quality. And a newbie coming to our event is the International Pool and Spa Association talking about water for recreation and water safety. So they will be with us. And that's kind of neat because they're really excited about coming out and being part of our community. Lastly, our slightly delayed new ADA compliant website will be launched on April 1st. No fooling. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Kathleen. Mm -hmm. uh, Citizens Advisory Committee met on March 12th. Karen mm -hmm. Tracy. Um, Member Director Luckman was there. She. This will be old news for her. Um, we received information, almost nothing new. We received information about the Employee Recognition and Awards Program that uh, General Manager uh, Sauer brought to, to, to the board already. Um, we had a discussion about the low income assistance program and future recommendations. The future recommendations is the important part. The low, the, uh, low income assistance program is currently in progress. We are in our first year. There was an allocation of money for which low income individuals can ask for assistance. Um, half of that money has been asked for. Um, there was dis a discussion about, well, does half mean half full or half empty? Should we? decrease the program, should we wind it down, should we add more money, should we advertise more. It was a large, um, it was a broad discussion, but there was no consensus. So it, it was tabled until we uh, gather more information or come up with new ideas. Um, if you are within the sound of my voice um, and you would like to apply for that assistance, the district does not administer it. Go to the United Way. Um, and ask for $50 to be applied towards your water bill. Uh, what else did we talk about? The solar program. There is a committee that is looking at having um, solar as part of our energy source. Uh, director Hund is the lead in the uh, director's uh, level. Um, there's a number of people who have uh, expertise in this level. They meet and they talk about um, how much that it will help the, the district and uh, how much land will be required. So we discussed or we heard a discussion about how much land the district should purchase and where that land might be. Um, we, had, we heard a general manager's report which matched almost exclusively, uh, almost identically your general manager's <laughs> report from last board meeting. Um, and I will reinforce the public information officer announcement about the Water Education Day. It's great. Come and check it out. Thank you. Thank you. Finance Committee, uh, that was uh, last week, I believe, and uh, Director Luckman uh, met with me, usually it's Bob Johnson. And uh, yes, where we did go through the, the, the fee increase uh, very exhaustively. Also looked at the, uh, the standby uh, outsourcing that administration. Um, our next, our next finance meeting is in April. We'll keep you posted. April water 10th. resources. 10th. It, it, it. So for water resources and operations, we covered much of the same stuff, including uh, many of the top line items here tonight. So I don't think there's a whole lot more that. I would add, I don't know, uh, Director Reynolds, do you have anything to add on water resources and operations? I think we covered it pretty well tonight. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think so too. Um, that, that's all I have. Yeah, we, we went into a little more detailed discussion and, and Mark, what Mark was present for the, um, the Well 14 update and I found that to be uh, very fascinating and I, and I do like the idea of um, 
looking into us um, putting in these sodium hypochlorite stations to create the the chlorine on on site, and uh, and I think it's probably wise to go from four log to eight log to um, just to make sure that we're you know sufficiently mixing the water with the chlorine and treating it sufficiently to get the job done. Rongo Basin Pipeline Commission was March 13th, Director Luckman. Yes, uh, Kirk talked about the fact that they're going to be making repairs to the pipeline and to the tanks. Anybody who's interested in knowing exactly what they're doing, this is the report they gave to the Pipeline Commission. The work is fairly extensive. Um, they're going to be redoing some tanks, the great big tank, but the, some smaller tanks too. It was fascinating. So anybody wants to look at that, they can do that. I would like a copy of that if possible. Thank you. <laughs> Take <two minutes>. <laughs> <coughs> Director Reynolds, the Association of Southern of San, San Bernardino, Bernardino County Special mm -hmm. District. Yep. I so was not able to attend that oh, meeting. Oh, you missed the dinner. Yeah. Unfortunately, there was a, uh, a deaf uh, close friend, uh, oh. so I uh, oh. chose to console instead. They usually brought back good information from those. Well, they usually are good, but there was um, a valid reason for my lack of attendance. Uh, there was a special meeting this morning uh, for the public information <coughs> committee, and uh, I met with Kathleen. It was very special, wasn't very, it? Very, very special. <laughs> to just get ready for Water Education Day. It is great. It's a lot of fun. And it's very informative. And there's a lot happens. It's festive. So March, uh, March 30, March 30, 30. 31st. 31st. It's a Sunday. Sunday. From 1 to 4 here. A week from Sunday? Future director meetings and training opportunities. Uh, Mojave Water Agency, March 28th, that's me. Um, Mojave Water Agency Technical Advisory uh, Committee, uh, that's April 4th. Director Luckman. Do I hear a motion to adjourn? I move to adjourn. <laughs> Second. Hi. Hi. Uh, Thank you.